Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler. So I get asked a lot the questions about the use of methyl B12 in autism. And some of you may know that I wrote a book a number of years ago on the use of methyl B12, uh, specifically methyl B12 injections for autism. But in that book, I also talk about other options, whether it's nasal spray, oral forms of methyl B12, even a lollipop of methyl B12. And there's no doubt, as I analyze things over these past many years, that methyl B12 has been a significant intervention in autism, particularly with regards to eye contact and cognitive awareness and uh, environmental awareness, sometimes improvements in language and speech. And that still holds true today. When I go back and look at the beginning of my involvement in using methyl B12, we're probably going back you know, 15 years now, uh, maybe even a little bit longer. You know, There wasn't as many options available for autism intervention. There was, certainly wasn't as many supplements or uh, you know, other types of testing and other types of interventions. And so as time has gone on, what I have realized is that methyl B12 and the methylation system is still a very important therapy and overall system to analyze. But from the standpoint of people jumping in right at the level of methyl B12 in all cases of autism is really not appropriate. And the reason is, is that you may hit on a specific positive response with methyl B12 in a select number of kids. But what I've also recognized is that a lot of people, when they see those responses, really don't tend to do much else or you know, really want to do much else, whether that's changing diet, looking at other supportive nutrients, looking at gut health, et cetera. And so eventually the positive effects of methyl B12 oftentimes don't occur as robustly as if um, compared to having worked on some of the underlying biological imbalances of, of autism or the benefits are short-lived. And so one of the things I would encourage you as a parent or caregiver who is considering methyl B12 therapy, particularly the injection therapy, is understand that it can be very beneficial, but it's best used in a greater context of biomedical intervention, knowing exactly sort of when to consider it um, and when particularly when to maybe start other therapies or pull certain therapies away. And I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from using methyl B12 in the injection form, but there's another aspect to it that has changed over the years and that's access. There are more restrictions on certain compounding pharmacies that are uh, producing methyl B12. And a lot of that depends on the state where you come from. Certain pharmacies can't deliver methyl B12 to certain states. And so that's always important to recognize when you are, are considering some of these compounded medications, which methyl B12 injections is. The same holds true if you are in another country outside the United States. It may not be available in your country. And I've actually seen now over the years that certain customs within certain countries are more restrictive than others. And unfortunately, it's highly unpredictable. And so there are other options for methyl B12 that weren't available 10, 15 years ago. Liposomal B12 is a good example of that and has shown good positive effects. So please consider methyl B12 as an option for your child, teenager, or even adult level with autism, but make sure to work with a health professional that is knowledgeable in its use, knowledgeable about how to apply it, when to apply it, what to see, when to stop it in case there might be problems. And don't look at it as a singular therapy that is gonna be a cure-all for all aspects of autism. It certainly is helpful, in some cases extremely helpful. But again, it really should be considered in this, this what I call this greater context, this greater approach or broader approach to autism.
intervention. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Walder. Thank you.